Good afternoon, and welcome back to another segment with Straight Talk with All Pest Solutions. My name is Wendell Daniel, founder and CEO of All Pest Solutions, and my guest today, again this month, is my son Jacob Daniel, my partner and uh, chief of operations. And today we're going to talk about our wildlife division. You know, been in business now 20 years, and we look back over the previous month of getting ready for today's podcast and realized we'd been in the wildlife business 10 years now. But when we, you know, as business owners do, when we're all looking at what can we do uh, to take our business to the next level 10 years ago, uh, which seemed like yesterday, the one thing that we were sending away the most or referring out was the wildlife calls, the squirrels, the rats, the raccoons, those kinds of things. And we were not in that business. And Frankly, with all my years of experience, I had never been in that business, but we knew we needed to get in that business. And so Jacob and I sat down and said, how do we get in this business? And so we started that process. We met with some other business owners, and we sent Jacob to school and classes. But at the end of the day, we just felt like we just got to get rolling, and we did just that. You know, Jacob has a saying that necessity breeds innovation, and we knew we had a need for this exclusion. And the interesting thing about our industry is 30, 40, 50 years back, the houses were built different than they were today. They're so architecturally designed today that the need has just grown that, and we just continue to take away all the places that critters live. But it's continued to become a need and a need, and we knew we had to figure it out. And so, you know, Jacob, with... His background, just so you have a little bit of history on Jacob, you know, he's always rigged our trucks, and we all understand fabrication. We've always done all those things in-house, and then he's a custom furniture builder, so his craftsmanship is second to none, and he took those skills, went to the field, and, and created, you know, through a process, the wildlife division that we know today. And what we really want to do today is, is all segments of podcast with us is educate the consumer. What's the difference when you are a consumer looking for a wildlife fix? And you know, when we first started, we started with what Jacob would call rudimentary materials. Um, but we quickly figured out that that wasn't the answer when you're dealing with the animal kingdom. And they only need three things, food, water, shelter. And they are not going to be denied those three things. And if you block out a mama squirrel or a mama rat from her babies, she will do whatever to get back in that structure. So today I just really want to talk about the difference. You know, if we're shopping cars, we all know the difference between, you know, a Hugo and a Bentley. When you're shopping wildlife exclusion fixes, you got to understand the differences because it's not easily noted the difference so you know i'm gonna turn it over to jacob today we're gonna kind of have a show and tell if you will he's gonna lay a little bit of foundation about how we got where we are today 10 years down the road and and talk about how we differ in the industry when it comes to wildlife jacob this is gonna be tricky to do in 16 minutes (laughs) there's so much history behind all of the the do's and the don'ts when it comes to wildlife exclusion, removal, um, remediation, all those things. And back in 2012, when we started doing this, I mean, we we literally went to the hardware store um, and just tried to put our hands on material that we could try to figure out uh, a a fix for, Uh, whether that be roof vents or eaves or AC lines, garage doors. And some of these things have been evolutionary changes along the way. We used to do some things and not all. We would just do uh, open mainstay entries or what we call main vein entries. That is the main path of travel. Uh, but other theories applied to this type of issue. But back in 2012, that first house we ever did was in, say, Slagos. Um, and, and the particular customer was um, friends of ours and just going at, at her wit's end, couldn't figure it out, uh, trying everything that she could do to solve that issue and it, it, she went fox urine and all those things, all the normal um, aspects. If you hop on Facebook and hop on other things, that's what they tell you to do. But it, it's not as common of a threat here, so they don't know no difference. Um, but we were just getting inundated with, with phone calls, and the squirrels are literally chewing our houses to toothpicks, and we need to figure out a way. 
And the answer for us was like, well, we just don't have it. Like they're, they're fur bearing and we do pest control. So here's somebody that does. Um, until we run across this particular customer. And then we started down that road. We got all the intel that we had at the time, uh, but even that plan had holes in it. Um, it was very, very uh, thin in its application and caused tons of problems. Um, yeah, the learning curve was very unforgiving. Oh, it was extremely unforgiving. And, and I laugh every day when, when we pitch these jobs. And I tell them, I was like, look, I've done it every single way. You can do it the wrong way. I, I, I tell you, it, it just there's certain aspects of this that you have to do, that you cannot waste time on. And Jacob and I were beating our heads against the wall with the Got Pest, Call the Best slogan and experience the ultimate value and take it in trust. We yeah. were, this ain't ultimate. This ain't value. Right. And this ain't got... This ain't got best call the best. And, and we just kept figuring out how to do it better. But even down to the trucks, I mean, we never took it anywhere to to work on those. Even the wildlife trucks, the pest control trucks, we built all that stuff in-house. We, we literally had all of the welding machines. We had sheet metal brakes. We had tools. We had all of the applications, and we're literally missing the buck. We had everything that we need uh, but did not have an aspect of, of fixing it. But as we dug into that, we got to really battle or figure out how to battle one of the smartest and most adaptive creatures on the face of the planet, uh, which is the roof rat. Now, originally in 2012, this started out with squirrels. Squirrels were the big mainstay. That was the big issue, right? Um, we, we constantly dealt with um, your squirrels just gnawing and chewing. Uh, find me that uh, towards the back. No, there should be an E. This will kind of dub as a uh, competitor fix. No, go back to the front. Sorry. On the front side. One more. Yep. So in in this example, oh, I should have, I've got thousands of pictures, but in this particular area is where our chewing was happening. This is what was visible to customers, what they could see. A lot of times it was happening up here in the Cornish line. Um, but that's where they could visually see what was happening in that particular area. Now, as you see here, we have competitor fix, which is here and here as well as here. Um, now, we should be good on that. Um, the big thing about that when it started with squirrels is that um, should be, I don't think I have another one there. Uh, oh, another, yes, sir. Let me have that one. one. That's, that's Mo Uh Here, that's your biggest visual aid or uh, easiest thing to see for most customers is that particular board. You got brick line here, that's your standard E, fascia, soffit, cornish here. That is the most obvious area which you're going to be able to see. That's what was making the phone ring the most at the time. But back then, I mean, almost exclusively, keep that one handy because we're going to use that one again. Um, back then, that was pretty much exclusively just squirrels. They were doing that. They were getting in vents. Um, just hold for now on those. Um, and we, we had to solve that issue. I mean, they're literally like little mini, mini beavers. They're chewing in massive excess. Um, and we started the process for squirrels. So the original exclusion plan started with squirrel exclusion. And then many years later, we seen uh, an a increase in rodent activity. Well, we kept finding that that was a big popular thing and then year after year we're dealing with more rodent and less squirrel more rodent and less squirrel etc cetera, etc cetera. you kind of like that whole what come first the chicken or the egg you know they were going hand in hand yes well and they're entering in a lot of the same areas and, and again that's another pitch aspect that we are, are talking about every day is that you can have both critters working in the same environment and never know it um, but at the same time your rodents populate by a factor of eight times faster than your squirrel does. And so it's it's constantly evolving, and it compounds like interest. I mean, one rat can turn into a 1,000 rats in one year's time. The older the neighborhoods get, the higher your likelihood of dealing with this goes on. And rodents literally just move in and take over by force and kick the squirrel out. But back then, squirrels would start in, chew a big gnarly hole, rodents come in, take control, kick the, rat, the squirrel out, and then... Now we have a rat problem that started as a squirrel problem. Now, if you pull that picture back up, the one we just had, no, no, the other one. Now, this is the like primal example of 
two different critters in one unicellular spot, okay? We have squirrel damage, okay? We have an attempted fix here, but that's only a couple of inches at best. That is a traditional rat hole. It's what we call a Tom and Jerry hole. Uh, but we originally started fixing this issue. Well, we found that they would chew a much larger hole, which I had a picture of, just don't. But that hole is about the size of a golf ball, maybe a squash ball. A uh, squirrel hole will be, you know, three or four times bigger than that. Size of my fist, I kind of got girly hands, but they can be even bigger than that. But when we developed a fix for squirrels, we unanimously figured out the fix for rodents. We just had to do more with it, so we're good there. Uh, but at the same time, that turned into how do we control the aspects of which rodents can get into in other ways, you know? And, and, you know, the thing that I think we didn't realize either going in was, is, as I mentioned earlier, how these houses are architecturally just cut up way more. You know, everybody wants a different house than, than, than the houses of the 70s and 80s. Mm -hmm. And so there's what we call natural gaps. And some of them were big enough to let the rats in, and we didn't have to chew nothing. Yeah. And so we start looking at these others, and we realize we got both things going on. And yeah. we realize we got entries that don't even – uh, that there's not even a chew mark, and but they need to be closed. And so how do we fix that? Yep. And, I mean, all of these areas are open in the same way. It's a, it's a pinnacle, I guess, uh, design flaw. And it's built so that you can get your shingles up underneath that eave line, but they can be tighter than they are. I'll even have even a lot of the um, um, West Plano, Willow Bend houses, really big, really nice houses, had some of the largest gaps I'd ever seen. They would be two, three inches tall, like something could literally just walk right in. If they get in that eave right there, just in any one of those pictures we've already looked at, they have total access of your entire house. They can get between the stud wall and the brick line. They can get to all other subfloors and attic spaces and then work weasel their way down into the garage and other things. I mean, the list goes on. Once they have access, it will just proliferate. It'll, it'll yeah, move and, into everything. You know, in Darwin's theory, life, the final way to sustain life plays out in the animal kingdom every single day. You take away their habitat, they will make your home a habitat. They will move in and mm -hmm. live. And, and then there's all those other things. We've got all kinds of props and stuff and things here today. You know, uh, you, you know we, we have gone to pecs in houses, and you know, we, we plumb houses with pecs, and we brought one of those in today. And it may or, you may not be able to tell or not, but... This is a piece of hot water pex, half inch hot water pex that was in a in an attic, and so here you can tell where it's been fixed. This was where a rat chewed in the first time, and then I'm gonna hand this off here. But here's where they chewed through and flooded the house the second time. I'll give that camera shot a little bit closer for you. There's just so much that can go down. Well, and that's it's, just another example. It's very hard to see, and it can be, uh, although a flood in the house is not hard to see. Um, now that. There, there have been some recent issues with pecs. Um, you know, I've done, I've done several in Saxe, um, and and they're, they're still, you know, between ten and twenty years old. Some have pecs running there, some don't. Um, the new, new houses haven't, haven't done a whole bunch of those yet, just because the newer neighborhoods are less likely to receive the same kind of pressure that, uh, say, a Woodbridge in Saxe does. It's been there long enough for it to have established a, a big problem. Uh, but that entire neighborhood has an issue, no different than a lot of the Plano neighborhoods or Murphy or Wiley or other things like that. It is it is built in. And then when you have a common issue that is like that, and it's, it's really just an access problem. Um, when they started running water from the top down, and we just introduced a whole new variable uh, that's accessible to them just because they naturally have access to it. Um, and so we just created a whole laundry list of problems. As good as PEX is and what it does, and in the non-freezing issues and more flexibility, we brought in a new issue with running it that way. Um, but like even electrical, pull that, pull that picture of electrical. The same theory applies to all the electrical in your house. All of that's run within the same, turn it up one. Yep. So, and again, this is just, you know, a security cable or um, AC, AC lines. Or no, whatever. that's just kind of just like really small. It's not heavy power, um, but this is all just kind of run throughout the house. All along these boards, which you, know, you see scratch marks here, they've chewed it from here to here and from here to here, but it's easily accessible at the point of the board here. A little bit of chewing back here. We see damaged insulation here, but 
all of, a lot of this electrical runs all throughout the entirety of the attic. So does the PEX. It's all run through the same places. So your your AC duct lines, all those things are running in the same same zones, and they're just fusing them to guide. These guys don't see very well. They're they're like dogs. They see in black and white, but they kind of see in a fuzzy black and white. You ever notice the mouse that's running within the house is usually running against the baseboard? It's because he's using it to help guide him to another part of the house. And in an attic, there are tons of support boards and beams and duct work and cabling and other things. They're literally just using that stuff to guide them where they need to go. And then so happens to find they can hear that water running or it's warm to the touch. That was a red peck, so that's hot water. Um, in the wintertime, that's like a homing beacon. Hey, come snuggle up with me. Um, but that's that's what they're after. Uh, but it's just it's accessible. That's the biggest thing. If they got access to those eaves and they're unprepared and they're unprepped to keep them out, then the rest of it is just history. It comes with it naturally. Jacob, let's transition to the sheet metal you have on the table there, mm-hmm. which at the end of the day, in our opinion, this is what separates us from most other pest control companies and exclusion companies uh-huh. out there. Worried about this. I, I we can literally talk about this for yeah. days. But you know, Jacob was like, Dad, we, we we've got to figure a better way. Like these rudimentary materials aren't working. They're they're outwitting us. They're getting in. They're moving. We fixed the one direct entry. They're moving around the house to the other. So we started attacking the house and all mm-hmm. of the entry points, but we didn't have any way to do that. So Jacob took his fabrication skills and we took sheet metal and we literally come up with our own patent type information here with bins and things. Uh, to fit these places and seal them up once and done for good. Yep. The paint to match, uh, screwed down, caulked Dude. in, and and it's a it's a fix. I mean, it is a fix. Do this. Grab. There's a. There are pictures of stuff that's installed that help to display this a little bit better. While you find that, you know, we did this originally with um, single pieces. It would be multiple zones, multiple things that we would add to. It looked like it was screwed to death. Um, just trying to get it to all hold. Um, but we, it's had, I don't know, four changes over its lifetime where we started just doing soffit work and then moved into soffit and fascia and then did some Cornish works. And so it took a long time to figure out the best fix in the, and I'm going to say it. Okay. But the big 20, the 2016 hailstorm was, um, not a good year for everybody, but it was a good year for an adaptment to this program. So even in the picture, now this is this is how the metal is applied to a standard angled eave, but hopefully we can see this. This is awfully shiny. I don't know if this is going to kick back, but in the very first pictures that we looked at, we had soffit and Cornish. The squirrels were chewing in the Cornish lines, which were up in here. This one extruded piece is made to fit that eave. Now, I can make this in however way we need to make this. It is literally custom sheet at the street. That's what we call it. We build it to fit, and we, we install it on location. But soffit, roof line, cornice line. S- made to solve the squirrel chewing in excess, but we're in the hole that we looked at previously. Our hole was down into here. That's all going to be fixed with even just this one piece. But this is modular, right? So I'll make this to fit. If I need to make it wider, then we'll add to that. Um, And then these are what we call our proverbial money clips. Now I can make this longer. I can make this shorter, however we need to. But this mounts into and on top of existing fascia. So fascia board being on the outside, they are here um, and nested cut together, fit, right? So they are literally going to be made in, layered. That goes in first, which then is followed with our soffit that comes in over the top of it. And then that is secured in two together. This is where we're at today. I could make this a whole bunch of different ways. But each one of these gains strengths or uh, gains the strength off of one another. I have, in 10 years, never had a critter bypass this ever if it was it was something else something new totally off the wall and unordinary the other thing i, I want to point out too jacob is is that you know our we don't run record pest control trucks on our wildlife side no. we run f-250 service bodies with ladders i've got a picture of that it was like my guys set up shop you know <laughs> not sure that's also fury but hey you know we literally Green. set up shop custom fabrication at the curb we're up and down the ladder a million times fit 
bolted, screwed, caulked, painted to match. But we're fabricators at the curb, at every house, at every yeah. eve, at every fascia, every time. And that's that's where the difference really lasts. Yeah. Well, and that's the thing is that we're running, we're running F-250 service bodies that are basically rolling sheet metal shops. Um, and then we just so happen to have traps and one-way doors, which that's a one-way door there, uh, to help us deal with this. Uh, but we literally set up shop at the house, which I'm sure eventually we'll do us a video and uh, get some of those other time-lapse things, uh, get that set up. Uh, but it is literally climb to uh, ladder or roof-wise, get to it, measure it, mold it, or make this and install it. Uh, by every any kind of necessary. one that's been fixed, painted to match, so you kind of see how that blends. I mean, at the end of the day, we're we're all about trying to make that largest investment of your life still look aesthetically pleasing. Yeah, and fortify it so we don't chew in a wire and burn the thing down, or mm-hmm. chew into some pecs and flood the thing. So at the end of the day, these are all things that are that we began with the end well, of mind. And it's and it, then again, it's all the same material. This is valley roll, step flashing. This is what they use for roof work every single day. But it can't be done at a couple of inches at a time. You can't you can't expect to come in and and give them more access or or I guess take away access that they can already climb around you and get. It's got to be taller. Standard measurements for this are 14 inches at the minimum. That's what it takes to keep squirrels out. Otherwise, they will get back in. But it also only doesn't only apply to one spot. When we do this, when we pitch this and install them, this is designed as an all-or-nothing type mentality. We we don't just do onesies and twosies. We tried that, and it just didn't work. So no. we, we, we fix the whole house. We look at the garage. We look at the AC lines. We look at every entry point, and we fix it all, and then you don't ever have another problem again. That's the other reason well, thing that makes us different. And, and when we weigh the options there, too, is it better to to have somebody mad on the front side to you know make that decision on spending power or buying power? And be like, hey, that's way too expensive to do. Now, all, all cards on the table. This is not cheap to do when you do it the way that we do, okay? But it is the only way I have ever found that works every single time without fail. But when you when you really work on this, you've got to give it a, a solid effort. They can get mad over the cost, or if you just do a haphazard job, spend a few hundred dollars, fix the one spot, and they come back, then you're mad again that they got back in. Where is the value in having to deal with it Every year, every other month, it never ends. Bottom line is, you call us, we will fix it once and done. And I can't remember the last time we had a re-entry problem when we'd done it. We'd done it with our fix. Well, and most of the time, it is man-made. It's man-created. In 2019, I had nine retreats on exclusion work that we had done. Uh, and every single one of those was a new AC unit or a heat pump or a new AC line. Is that they cut off the existing um, some of them they sweat a new one on, and sometimes, most of the time they ran one upside or outside the house into the soffit. That created a new entry and created a new problem. But when we go down this road and we go do this and we seal up AC lines or garage doors and the other things that we haven't talked about yet that are still down there, um, then you don't have to go down that road again. Those are fixed. If we have one-off issues, then we have one-off fixes. But with a base that we're following that's already been installed. We'll kind of wrap up here. I just want to show this. This was a, one of my favorite pictures. It, <laughs> what we do is is uh, is very dangerous. It's a 32-foot ladder set. That's a three-story building, and we're, we're working from the ground floor. That happens every day, all day in our business. Okay, Getting to these places of fix is not an easy task. Mm-hmm. As we begin to try to close today, I, you know, this was a supply line. No, a, no, that's a that's a drain, drain line, line for I mean, a dishwasher. For a dishwasher, literally just riddled by a rodent. Um, um, that's actually a very good point. Um, for any customers that may see this or, or may have had this issue or may have it in the future, if you're having rodents in your house, in your kitchen, which, then again, is rare, uh, but it does happen, it's almost always, I'm going to say 95% of the time, at the dishwasher, behind the dishwasher, in the wall. And, and that's if you pull the dishwasher out, you almost always find a hole. Uh, but that's how that happens. That line's run right behind the dishwasher, and the rest of it's plastic. I'm going to show this one, too, as we begin to close. Is it, don't question what uh, the strength of a, of a rodent's teeth. This is a golf ball, and everybody knows how tough a golf ball is. I'm going to toss that and let you look at it. 
if they can chew the cover off of a golf ball, they can chew through that line, they can chew through your wires, they can chew through your everything but metal. That's why we do it the way we do it. Well, and, and aluminum's not safe either. It's got to be steel. Yep. So it's kind of closed, Jacob. We're already about three or four minutes over our 20-minute limit. So I know. Um, I, I want to say before you do a final closing statement, I, I want to kind of do a PSA um, just from what we're dealing with. So this this is for any and everybody that is a customer of ours. Um, we have been working, I say we, my girls at the office, Corey especially, have been working on a new system that we're trying to get moved to. We are blending QuickBooks and other scheduling software, other, other aspects, and bringing that all together into one. So we have new ways to uh, for you guys to log in, make payments, see history, and all those things, but it is monumentally huge. We have 20 years' worth of data, customers, and all the things we have to blend and bring together. So more or less, I'm asking for patience. Um, the best that you can give it to me and or us as we get this uh, gathered together. This is this is a huge move, but it's going to make us more efficient, and allow us to be more proactive about scheduling and flexibility and all of those things. So and, just and take us to a new level, a new level as, as yeah. a company. And uh, and we went live on that program. Well, they're working on it now. Yeah. They're we're as a company, we are scheduling in it. We're working with it. We're working the bugs out in it. Uh, ironically, uh, but we go live, live like. Hopefully this afternoon or in the morning, where we can be collecting payments, you logging into your portal and being able to see those things. So that's happening as we speak. So just be patient. Um, and my girls are stressed to the max. So <laughs> is uh, is as nice as we can. We'll work through. I'm it. sure wherever you've worked, you've uh, launched a new software program before. It's always interesting. Yes. But we hope you learned something from us today. We appreciate you joining us. Uh, we haven't talked about what next month's segment is going to be, but we've got lots of them coming. I mean, um, we, we didn't really scratch the surface on protocol and the, the steps and the, everything to go. But I know we're going to come back and, you know, we're going to do these monthly, obviously, and, and continue to educate the consumer. And we'll break these down and we'll, we'll talk about baiting. We'll talk about our snap trap mm -hmm. programs and, and our garage exclusions and all some of those yeah. sp very specific tasks under the wildlife umbrella. And like I said, we're going to have some termite segments and some pest control segments. But, uh, hey, we appreciate you joining us today for Straight Talk with All Pest Solutions, and we will see you next month.